Hey, everybody. So I'm Jamie. I am a co-founder of a company called Convex that makes a backend as a service that's useful for building dynamic web applications um, using reactive web frameworks. And so you don't need a database, you don't need servers, you just use Convex, your problems go away. That's the idea. Um, so far, we've really focused on making Convex work really well with React, and that's been uh, great. You know, obviously we love React, it's a lot of React users. But recently we had a little event at our um, at our offices where there was a great talk by the creator of a framework called SolidJS, and SolidJS looks pretty cool. And so today I'm going to sit down and work on taking a look at Solid, taking a quick look at Convex, and then at spending most of my time here with everybody working on connecting solid to convex so that you can use solid instead of react and just to see what that looks like and how difficult it is to do. So without further ado, let's jump into that. So, um, cool. I'm going to make a little like to do for myself here real quick so that we know where we're going. Did a little intro. We're going to take a look at solid, do the same with convex. Sorry for typing noises and stuff. I'm doing pretty low tech here, just my laptop. And then finally combine solid and convex. Um, I mentioned we had a cool event. So got this picture here. This was, we had like 70 people in our office. It was super fun and, um, and had a few interesting talks, including the solid one. And yeah, that was the inspiration for digging a little deeper into solid was just being intrigued by that framework and seeing, you know, our project convex, how well it could tie in. So let's take a look at solid first, just in case there are many of you watching who maybe have not used solid before. Easiest way to do that, we're going to go to their web page, go to the getting started page. And right down here, I know there's this copy and paste for the TypeScript version of um, creating a solid project here using to get so Let's come over here to the command line and grab that and let's call it solid convex because um, we'll turn this project into the project that uses convex. So I'm going to npm i, make sure I can get everything installed here and then we'll do a pop it up, get it running, load it in a browser and just make sure Everything looks good. Yep, it's all good. So this is a solid project. And if someone asked me to explain, which no one has, but let's pretend that they did, to explain what solid is. So solid is another way to make reactive web applications without React. And I would say the biggest difference between React and solid is that React kind of makes the unit of reactivity the com component. And so um, when something changes, when some state changes, the entire component tree is rerun, including all the code within the component. And then um, the proposals of the resultant DOM get made into the virtual DOM and then some really smart delta diffing goes on inside like the React runtime to make sure that the actual DOM is only updated where necessary. Right, so it doesn't change the entire actual DOM. It just it takes all of these components being rerun to remake a virtual DOM, and then that virtual DOM is compared against the actual DOM just to apply the differences. Um, so, Solid is different than that. So, Solid decides instead to just make these very simple reactive atoms that are they look a lot just like regular JavaScript code, and it only reruns the component. It only runs the component once when the page is like initially loaded. And when that component is run, the component recognizes any time one of these callable atoms of reactivity was invoked. And it remembers whatever like DOM node that populated, that it knows that that DOM node depended on whatever atoms it called. And so then when it's time to redraw, it just knows how the dependencies work. It knows these DOM nodes rely on these atoms. And if the underlying data changes in those atoms, then it just swaps out that one DOM node. So there is no virtual DOM. There's almost like a little bit of a compilation step where it translates those 
function calls that produce the value inside of those behind those atoms into kind of tracing that back is something that should that be updated, then the DOM num that called it should be re-rendered with the new value. I don't know if that's confusing or good or not, but there's much better explanations as you might expect on like Solid's website and some pretty good YouTube videos just discussing the principles of Solid a little bit. But let's kind of try to make this a little more concrete after I've blabbed about it for a bit. So as we can see here, the kind of default um, Solid app is just not doing much of anything. Um, just looking very, I am a new app-esque. So let's actually show some of this reactivity here for a second. Um, and so the, the Solid docs mention the most basic unit, the most basic atom of reactivity is using is making a signal. So we can say um, count set count is equal to create signal. Um, and with an initial value, we'll say it's zero. And then down here, let's get rid of this whole header because we're not going to use the boilerplate anymore. We're going to say the current value is, and then we're just going to say count. And unlike React, because signals are callable functions, right, or closures or whatever it is under the covers, we can't just stop here with a value because it's not going to rerun this entire component with the new value. We actually need to invoke the function and that will produce the current value. And this is what I mean about, in a way, my mental model for how SolidWorks is that when this invocation is written here, it knows now whatever DOM node this dropped into depend on that value and the kind of engine quote unquote behind solid will um, only rerun, re-render that, that single DOM node um, without the use of a whole virtual DOM being completely reconstructed and diffed, et cetera. So again, I'll stop trying to explain it there, but let's just see how this works. Um, oh yeah, we're not running. We're not running the server anymore. That's probably a problem. So um, did we actually lose our, um, let's see. We kind of lost our, uh, our window here. No big deal. Um, run, npm run dev, there we go. Current value zero, yay. So what did we do? We created a signal with initial value of zero, um, and sure enough, when it's invoked, it's zero. So now we can do our classic, okay, first bit of reactivity is like, um, is something like this. Maybe that would work. Um, increment it, let's try that, see what happens. Um, something's unhappy here. Oh, it's because I put it outside the div. Yeah, okay, clean this up a little bit. Now what do we have? It doesn't like that. Current value is one. Why doesn't it like that? Number is not assignable to type event handler. Oh. Um. Okay, now how do we feel? Yay, reactivity. So we sure enough made a button. The onclick handler uh, grabs the current value of count, which once again, that engine inside of solid knows that this button too depends on the current value of count. And then it calls set count, which will itself update the value of count, et cetera, et cetera. So um, there we go, this is reactivity. Now I'm gonna do something that might feel a little silly to you, um, but um, it should be clear in a minute why I'm doing it. I'm gonna create a second browser window. And as probably you would guess, these are two independent values. So SolidJS is really just about creating great framework for doing reactivity in the browser. In order for these to be shared values, we somehow would have to have some networked component that's allowing these two sessions to communicate with each other and to share the value. And sh this is not this is state management, right? That we're doing here, but it's it's not what Convex does, which is global state management, which is a new name we're using for a new kind of way to build backends. It's about extending state management beyond this kind of state management uh, browser in a single value into shared states across the internet, across multiple users, persisted into databases, all that kind of fun stuff. So let's dig now into Convex, now that we kind of have our hello world 
of um, of solid. So what does the hello world of convex look like? I'm create a new tab here. And I'm gonna check out the convex demo repo, which is right here. Um, and let's see, there it is. Hello, convex. Perfect. What does this look like? So, hello, uh, convex is really you have whatever your app is built with React usually, but we're going to make it solid here in a minute. This one is using is using React, and um, and then what you have is you have some convex functions like this one is called get counter, and this one's called increment counter, and they're in this folder called convex. And so what happens is you create a convex backend, um, a convex deployment that um, holds all of your database tables and helps propagate your global state between all the different users of your app. So I'll kind of show you an example is to make this a little bit more clear here in a second. Um, so before we go looking too closely at this code, let's set up convex here. Um, so I'm gonna log into my dashboard. And I have these untitled projects. I'm actually going to deactivate. Deactivate this. Um, because uh, I have five deployments, I'm only allowed to have five. <laughs> I have to clear up a slot. So now that I've done that, I can um, do npx convex init. And it's going to install the convex project here. And then it's creating new deployment. Um, and let's see. Let's uh, ignore that for a second. So we've created our deployment. It's called uh, Untitled Project. This is Jittery Goldfinch 130. It was just created here. Um, and I don't have any functions in it yet. I don't have any data. I have nothing. Nothing's been done yet. This is a brand new backend deployment with nothing in it yet running in the cloud. So I could do my serverless program with cool backend stuff here in just a second. Um, so inside of Convex, we have um, these two uh, functions, increment counter and get counter. Let's look at those a little bit more closely now. So increment counter is Convex has mutations and queries. Queries are basically just like reading data and mutations are changing data. So in this mutation, we'll look at that first. We grab this table called counter table and we get the first document out of it, which it just means to take, you know, a random first document. If no documents exist yet in it, then we create an initial document, which um, this is the number we want to increment the counter by. So it, let's say it's one, then obviously the counter documents initial value would be one. We incremented it from zero to one, and then we insert it into this table, the counter table. Otherwise, the document does exist, it's not null. We increment the counter by whatever the, the value is, and then we replace it, we drop it into the database. Now, this is where we get into why convex is good for reactivity, is that when we do this mutation, um, we have this pairing, which is the query, which is reading the value back out. This is gonna be even easier to understand. It's much less code, right? So grab that same first document, if it exists, return the value down here. If the document's null and the document doesn't exist yet, then the counter is zero. If no one has incremented the counter yet, we'll just consider the counter to be zero. So as you can see, every time I call increment counter, I'm gonna increment that, that field on that document by one, so we'll go one, two, three, four, et cetera, assuming my increment value is one. But the first value will be zero. What's cool about convex is you push these functions into the cloud, your app can call these functions, and any apps that are listening, that are using this query, will automatically have the, their query rerun and the value updated whenever any value changes that they depend on. So what value does this depend on? Well, this, this depends on a document in the counter table, the first document. And so 
whenever this is run and it changes that document by either inserting or replacing that document, anybody that just ran this query and is kind of still has a React component, let's say that's bound to this query, will automatically get the new value. So um, it's it's like seamless reactivity, and I'll show you how that works in just a second. So let's let's actually deploy into our into this new convex project um, this this code base. So npx convex push should push these functions up there, um, and npx convex code gen. Um, j -j -j -j. cannot resolve convex server. Hmm. Oh, you know what? Doing something stupid here. There we go. I hadn't actually installed Convex yet. I just had the command line, but not all the rest of the libraries. Okay, so you can see these two remote deployment will be overwritten the following change. The following two modules are added, git counter and increment counter. And so now if we come over to our dashboard, oh look, functions. Here's git counter, the one we just looked at. Nothing, Nothing's gonna shock you here. This is what we just took a look at. There's still no data. Okay, all well and good. So also inside of this repository though, as you can see, is this itty bitty React app. And here it is, it calls us use query and attaches it to counter. And this is doing what I described earlier. It is binding the result of get counter, the read query function to this value counter. And then increment counter is creating a function increment that is bound to the mutation increment counter. So let's see it in code here. Here's the counter. We have a div that just shows the current counter. And then we have a button who's on click handler uh, calls increment counter. That's it. What does this mean? This means npx uh, npm run dev. We are gonna be on 3001. Am I still running the other one? Looks like it. So here's this one. Now let's recreate what we just tried to do in solid. Again, Solid wasn't designed for this, but now we have this two separate browser windows and a counter. And look, they're sharing the counter. They both go up. This is what convex means by global state management, right? So this is still state. It exists in the same kind of reactive language about state um, that every other bit of state you use inside of React does, but it is global. It's shared. And you can build really powerful apps with that pattern. Um, and that's what a lot of people are doing with convex. So, um, yeah, hopefully that's a pretty good example to, um, and just to also clarify and complete the understanding of how this all works. Um, let's come back to our convex dashboard. This represents the back end. This represents what's going on inside of our project, the, how the shared state is actually being managed. And now if we go to data, Hey, there's a counter table and look what value it has 19. That's the same values here. Oh, look, it updates reactively too. So whenever we update that value, we can see inside of this kind of database view, that counter table, remember that our functions we're talking to, the counter table, they're grabbing the first document. That document does exist and the counter value is 23. So hopefully that's a pretty good understanding of like what Convex does for you. You can build all kinds of complicated tables and applications and you can have relationships. And this is actually a transactional atomic database. There's lots of fancy advanced features schemas and indexes. But today, let's just use the basics and play around with getting something like this to work in SolidJS. Um, check out logs too. We can see our all of our invocation history and, and we can see any console.log we do inside of our server-side convex functions just gets dumped here. Like, got stuff and value of counters now 21. We will probably find those in our code here. Got stuff. Value of counter is now counter doc dot counter. Cool. All right. Well, that finishes the intro sections. Doubling back to our our little to do to do here. 
we were going to talk through the introduction to each of these systems. Um, Solid, we took a look at that, talked a little about how Solid works, how it might be a little different reactively than React. And then we took a look at the bog standard convex first hello project. So let's go back to Solid and make Solid have global state using convex. Okay, we're back. I just took a short break, got another Coke, and I'm gonna dive into the second half of this, which is now that we've taken a look at both of these things in isolation and hopefully built a little bit of understanding of like solid and convex, let's like try to smush them together and see if we can get a globally shared counter running in solid using that same exact convex deployment. So let's get started with that. I'm going to start powering through. we got some code to write here. So, all right. Here, to refresh our memory here, is our, um, our basic non-convexian, if that's a word. I don't even know. Let's call it a word. Solid app. So we create a signal. We have a count. We have a set count. And we're making that counter increment. We might still have that open. We might not. Um, yeah, there it is. And let's pin this so we don't lose it. Cool. So this is our dashboard for our backend. All right, let's start making this happen. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm gonna kill the convex window because it doesn't matter anymore. I am going to copy inside of convex.json is... a um the specification of where to find our back end so i'm actually going to copy that over to our solid project just so i'm starting to have um all of our stuff in one place and then there's also an env.local um maybe i'll copy that over as well because i think that might have the authentication information in it um let's see if we can do all this without <laughs> me revealing it in the in the browser, um, or sorry, on the stream. Okay, cool. So we, in theory, we have our convex stuff there. We can probably also just like recreate this by, let me copy the functions over as well. We don't technically need them, but if we try to push again, then we kind of know it's all, it's all hooked up. Um, yeah, let's do that. Let's build confidence. We've got the convex side all copied over correctly by copying the convex functions over as well. Um, and then let's see if we can push, npx convex push. Oh, yes, see this is why it's a good idea to try it before we move on. Um, we really want to add convex here, dependency solid.js. Convex is 0.1.6, I think is the version we're using. Rerun. Let's not make the same mistake we made last time and sit here and wonder why we had that error. Yeah, yeah, good. Deployment config already synced. So Convex realized these are the exact same functions it already has, so it, it was a no op. That's okay, but we know we've got Convex hooked up here doesn't mean our app can talk to it. So what we're going to do is I'm going to create a, um, a file called cvxsolid.ts. And this is going to be where we're going to put our mini client library um, that is going to create the way that we can bind um, convex and solid together. So inside of um, our hello world over here, you can see the, the, the idioms that Convex uses, which are um, use state, use mutation. It's kind of like use query, right? So this is hooks kind of language, and so it is using hook, hook semantics under the covers. So when in Rome, right, um, 
So um, actually inside of solid, instead of use stuff, they say create, create signal, et cetera. So um, I'm gonna start by saying, and I've got some notes here next to me from um, when I tried this a little earlier. So if you see me looking to the side, I'm cheating a little bit. That's what I'm doing. Um, so we're gonna make a, in fact, so let me just copy and paste some of this over so we keep it moving. So I actually have my previous thing over here, but let's do it um, like this. So we are going to grab this. Um, and um, and then we're going to grab, let's see, I don't need the dictionary. I don't even know why that's up. Um, this is really what I wanted. So let's get these things established first. And then we can start talking about what they are and how we're going to fill them in. Finally, this one. Okay, um, we somehow missed the actual code. Yes. Okay, we want all of this. Yeah, copy all of that. Come back over here. Stop having the dictionary pop up. There. Okay, so let's start with these three things. The inside of our React convex code, the way we're magically able to say use query in a context-free way is because in the root of our app, we have a convex provider. So there's a context here, there's a client being made, and that client is using that convex.json to pull the origin. So this is how our app knows how to find which wh what URL our deployment is where our deployment is actually running. Um, check, make sure my stream is working here. It is. Cool. Um, cause I've talked for an hour and no one see any of it would be kind of weird. Um, and frustrating probably. So, um, so you can see, we create this convex react client and with the origin, and then we create this convex provider and pass the client in. And now there's contextual ability to say things like use query, um, in somewhere in our component stack and like, you know, convex will know what client, what origin, et cetera. Let's do something similar. So this, the parallel inside of um, solid is that solid also has context. So what we're gonna do here is we are going to say, create context, which is gonna come out of the solid, uh, solid library right there. And we'll just leave it at that for now. So um, it is going to be using a context and um, it's, it, it's going to hold the convex solid client, which is gonna be our equivalent of, let's actually close this, it keeps getting in the way. It's our equivalent of the, um, the React, convex React client. So um, yeah, cool. So we're gonna have to write that. This is gonna be where the magic is. And then we're gonna, the, our big thing is gonna be, instead of like use query, we're gonna create something called create query, which is gonna be the solid JS equivalent. And remember, instead of a magic value, it's gonna be a callable that returns a value. And then we're gonna create a mutation and that will be a callable that returns a, a promise to a value because mutations are asynchronous. Um, so um, I'm just gonna like, um, do, let's leave those empty for right now. And let's start working on the convex client. So, um, so the solid client, it has a few things in it. It has a link to the internal convex client. So, um, or a, a member that is the internal convex client. So in, inside of the convex react library, we have this react convex react client which this is the client that is React aware that integrates with hooks and everything like that. Um, it wraps this thing called the internal convex client, which can be used to build abstractions into other frameworks. Um, it's a lower level interface that doesn't assume you're inside of React. So we're gonna be actually using that client to make our solid client here. Um, and then we are also going to have a list of subscriptions. And so this is where the magic like subscription dispatch stuff is gonna happen. And so um, that is gonna be a map 
of query tokens to um, a few different things. So there's going to be this first function, um, a string, um, a list of innies, an array of innies, and then one more function here. Um, there. So what are these complaining about? Property plans? No. Oh, yes. No initializer yet, of course, for sure. All right. And then finally, a constructor um, is going to do some stuff. So let's talk through these things real quick. So I already mentioned the client is internal convex client. This is going to be how we talk to convex. And then these subscriptions. So the magically updating reactive values is we need to keep track of all of the places where solid has asked us to automatically update um, uh, values. So that means when the people call create query, every time they call create query, it's going to make a subscription that tells the convex client, execute this query and, um, and then keep streaming me values until I unsubscribe, basically. So let, let me write that down. Uh, list of create queries um, calls below that represent current subscriptions to convex queries. Um, and then these four arguments, um, you know, if I was gonna do it over again, I probably would create a, a, um, a structure that named all of these things, but let's just do it like this, just to talk it through. So the first argument is it takes um, a value um, and it returns uh, a value. So this is actually the setter. So this is this function is going to be what um, solid gives us to update the final um, value. So when we call this function with new values coming from convex, solid will make sure that end up in all the places it's supposed to. So whoever called use query from all of the places that they said use query, every time we call the setter, it will treat that as a, as a new value available behind that callable and it will re-render all of the nodes. So you'll see how that works in a minute. But that's the setter from solid. These next two are kind of the key to the, um, to the, the um, convex query. This string is the name or path of the of the query. So this is the example of this. This could be like get counter. Okay. And then the, the list is just the arguments to query. So increment counter with you know a list of just one in it, right? It would be call um, increment counter with a single number, which is one. That's what the next two are. So the string here is the the name or the path to the UDF. Um, sorry, to the query. UDF is user-defined function. It's the query <laughs> in convex. Um, and then this, these are the arguments. Um, and then finally, the very last argument, this is the unsubscribe function from convex. So the very last argument in that list is the way, is we, we're going to hang on to that, is that when we tell convex, hey, some uh, that someone called create query and now they're interested in the r result of this query and they want to continue, we want to continue to get updates whenever that query value changes. Um, the convex internal convex client is going to say, okay, cool, here's a callable I'm going to give you back that when you're done and you don't care anymore about this query, just call it and I will stop streaming you values, right? So you'll see how that plays in in a minute. And don't worry if all this is a little confusing. This this is this is the meat of this project. So this is the one part we're going to talk about a lot more as we go. This is the complicated part: is what does the subscription represent in convex? So in the constructor, let's just set some of these up. So we're going to say um, we're going to have the constructor take an origin, which is going to be the URL um, for um, uh, where to find your convex deployment. What's the URL to the convex? backend that you're talking to. Um, and that's a string. And then um, down here, we'll say origin equals origin 
uh, or convex config. Um, let's say import convex config from convex .json. It's probably going to complain because it wants uh, resolve JSON module in the TypeScript config, which we will do. JSON module is false, true. Let me go back here. It's probably going to be happy with this now, or at least it will be momentarily. There it goes. Okay, so what this means is when we build this convex solid client, you let them pass in a URL to some special backend. Probably we're just going to pull it from the convex JSON. Um, and uh, this is unhappy because she's not assignable to type string or undefined. Um, origin string, convex version of string. Um, okay. Hmm. Uh, oh, it's because it's not just convex config. <laughs> it's that origin. Okay, there we go. Yep. Cool. All right. This dot subs equals new map. We don't have any subscriptions yet because no one has called create query yet. And then um, this dot client equals uh, a new internal convex client. Okay, so now we're using that client we're wrapping. And we're going to give it the origin, which is the first argument. And the second argument it wants is this function called on transition. Okay, so we're going to do this and I'll explain what we're doing. Um, we're going to have this function called handle new values. Um, to do. Okay, so the internal convex client, the second argument it wants here is it wants you to give it a callable. And this callable, every time it has a list of queries that you're subscribing to that have changed, this is the function it's going to call. So this is the whole way we manage our subscriptions is um, whenever the backend has new values for outstanding subscriptions, the internal convex client is going to call this closure, which is going to call handle new values. So let's, let's write that down here. Called by convex internal client every time some of our subscriptions have new values. And on the convex docs, by the way, if you ever want to check any of this stuff out, we go to API reference, browser, and then um, there you have it. You can always come in here, low level client for directly integrating state management libraries with convex. Um, it's <laughs> advising us, we probably don't want to use that, but today we're being kind of crazy and we're using it. But anyway, this has a pretty good description of all this. And you can see here a callback receiving an array of serialized queries called each time updated queries results are received from the convex cloud. Yep. So again, as we fill out pieces of this, that stuff will probably become a little clearer. So let's actually leave that blank for now and let's move on to other methods. So let's go add subscription. Um, and this is going to take um, a path. I'm going to put um, query path string args any. And this is going to return a string. Um, OK, so this is whenever we have a new subscription to con a convex query. Okay. Again, this will be, this will happen when create query is called. So um, add sub, we're going to say const query token unsubscribe equals this um, dot client dot uh, subscribe. So we're going to create a new subscription to a query and this is going to be the query path and the args. So as you might recall, and again, let's go look at this, um, the, the path here, which is going to end up in our map right here, is get counter. And the args are going to be empty for this. The args for this could be a single number, right? This is what's meant by subscribe, is subscribe to this query. So when we subscribe, you'll recall up here I said, 
convex internal client is going to give us back a callable that we should um, unsubscribe. Uh, we should call after um, we no longer care about this query. So that's really going to come again from solid telling us maybe the components unloaded or something like that. And so we no longer need to subscribe to this query because no one cares anymore. The query token is just a magical string that we get back from the internal convex client that says, this is basically the key you can use to talk about this query path and these args together. So this is going to be the key. That's why this is the key in our um, subscription map. Um, and why is this unhappy? There's no initializer. Not definitely assigned in the... Interesting. Construct, oh, constructor, that's why. Yeah, oops, there we go. Um, cool. So I keep reiterating because we keep running into the same players. Unsubscribe. When we call that convex's internal client, no stops listening to new results from that query. The query path and the args are the get counter and then any arguments to that function. The token is returned is the key that we use to communicate back and forth with the client about what we meant by this subscription. Um, and then we're just going to store that stuff so that later on when we get updates like new values, we know what they're talking about. So um, uh, this dot subs dot set query token. And then the four values are the setter. Um, which was going to be passed in here. The um, query path, the args, and then the unsubscribe. And then we're going to return the query token out of here because that's going to be used in a place you'll see in a minute. So that's it for add sub. Now rm sub. So um, they're going to give us, actually, before we do this, let's, let's finish subscribing, OK? So create query is really where we subscribe. So what are we going to do inside of query? Create query. Okay, so this is, this is our main entry point coming from solid. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to assume that there is a convex client in the con a context established, just like there was in our React app here. Um, we're going to assume that they have provided the, the client, initialized a client that we can get access to from anywhere in solids like component stack. So in order to do that, we are going to say const convex equals use context um, for uh, the convex context. Um, and so, um, and then we want to say if, we'll do a little error handling here, throw no convex um, context. So they haven't created a, a convex client and put um, and placed it inside of a convex context so that there's nothing for us to grab. Um, otherwise, if it exists, then um, we can say, um, well, first of all, if the args is um, let full args equals args or here. And then just in case they don't include arguments. Um, and then finally, we're going to do the real magic here. Okay. Return from. Okay. So from now, we've talked a little bit about convex's magic is this line. So I'm going to make this a little bigger so we can see it. This is convex's magic. From. From is the special sauce in solid. So let's take a look at it. Okay, this is how really the way that we think about how we connect these two things, if we want to focus on the understanding of that is subscribing to the internal client on the convex side and using from on the solid side. That's the whole game. Those are really the two parts that matter the most. A little bit hand, how do you handle updates up here, but we'll get to that in a minute. So from is down here somewhere. I went past it. Um, how, how am I running past this every time? 
There it is. <laughs> okay, so. From a helper to make it easier to interop with external producers. Um, this basically turns any subscribable object into a signal, and it manages subscriptions and disposal. This is exactly what Convex wants, and the fact that this exists in Solid is amazing because this makes it really easy to hook Convex up to Solid. So you can see here, um, you can have an, something that has a subscribable kind of pattern with a subscribe method. We're just going to do this. We can also take a custom producer function where the function is passed to a setter and it returns an unsubscribe. So we can give it front. Remember I said we're going to talk about a setter soon? Here it is. So when we use from, solid gives us a set function. And then it lets us do whatever we're going to do. This example is using set interval to make it so that every second it sets the value to one. And then finally, after you do whatever you're going to do with the setter um, uh, and, and, and call set as often as it makes sense to refresh the value, then you return from this from function um, basically the unsubscribe. So you return from this function some closure, some, some callable that solid will call once it's time to no longer care about that producer or that subscription. That is typically going to mean when the component's unmounted or um, the uh, router changes pages or something like that. So you no longer want to be um, having that subscription be alive. Okay, we're going to use this, and this is going to be the key. So what we're going to say is from setter, we are going to say const query token equals convex dot add sub setter and the query path that says UDF path let's do setter query path and um, the arguments which is full args and that's it right yep okay that's it. We have now subscribed, right? We have given the setter to this internal client, or sorry, to our solid convex client, and it will set the value so that um, solid updates its value in its rendering every time the convex has a new value. Okay, cool. Um, is this going to be like upset? Because it's like, what is that type? Okay, interesting. Um, we're going to blow on past that for right now, aren't we? Yeah, I would say we are. Cool. Um, okay. And then what's next? So finally, we're, we need to return the unsubscribe. So we're going to call convex.rm sub, which we haven't written yet, with the query token. So once solid determines we no longer need to subscribe to this, then um, we want to unsubscribe. Let's write that, rm sub. So this is going to be query token is a string. And well, I don't think we're gonna return anything from this one. No, we're not. So um, we're gonna say let query info equals this.subs.get query token. So this should, We'll use that same token, which is the key, to find the query information that we've stored in our map so we can get back all our info. And then um, we will say, um, uh, well, let's just have a little handler here. Um, uh, would that be no? If, let's see, uh, let's just assume it's all good. Um, so const. Okay, we don't care about the rest, but we need that unsubscribe back. So it's time to tell Convex we no longer care about the subscription because Solid has told us no one cares about the value anymore. Um, we're just gonna we're just gonna hit hit bang and assume that this is not null. So it should it should always be there. If it was subscribed, um, then it should always be in the map, basically. Um, otherwise, Solid has done something confusing to us. Um, all right, so we have our unsubscribe, we call it. Now Convex should drop the subscription. 
and then this dot subs dot delete and we want to delete it based on that key the uh, query token so um, and that's it so all right going back one more time here is our create query um, we call add sub it subscribes in convex and then it holds on in our map to um, you know the query path the args the setter and unsubscribe to unsubscribe it and then later on when uh, solid determines it's time to stop subscribing we call remove sub which calls the unsubscribe function that was given to us from convex drops the subscription on the wire and then finally it deletes it out of our map and then it's completely clean everything is good here except we have no new values <laughs> we have no new values so what we're never actually doing is calling the setter right we store the setter but we never call the setter so the way that that works in convex is this magic all important handle new values function that was passed when we created the client every time any of your subscriptions has a result right the first time or the 50th time because of changing data handle new values would be called with the list of all of the queries that are um, new um, and so this list is a list of query tokens so it actually says string here but query token is um, is what it really is because query token is an alias for string so um, uh, let's see cool 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 I think so yeah all right this is the magic part. This is where we actually relay. We call the setters and we update stuff. So um, let's let's iterate through them for const query uh, token of updated queries. We are going to say let query info equal self dot subs dot what? How do we get that? Subs dot. Why are you doing that? Self of self this dot subs. Uh, we probably have some garbage thing up here somewhere, right? No, okay. It didn't do anything weird. This dot subs dot get query token, and then um, if query info is not equal undefined. Okay. So the reason we can't necessarily completely bank on this is that it's possible that we get a dispatch from the server for a query token that we unsubscribe to just before this callback got called. So um, I don't know actually enough sitting here about the semantics of the internal convex client to know that it guarantees you it will not dispatch back an update to a query token that you very recently unsubscribed to. So defense in depth here a little bit we will make sure that this is still a sub uh, that we are care about that um, solid still cares about and if it is then we will handle it so const setter uh, uh, query path args um, and don't care we don't care about the unsubscribe let's put it here just so on sub equals query info Hey, we're finally gonna complete the puzzle. Ready? Now, const new value equals this dot client dot local query result. So local query result basically means just pass the cached version of the result of um, this query path with those args. Um, this is not a future because this is returned out of the local cache. So Anytime we get one of these handle new values updates called, we basically know if we call local query result, we will immediately be returned the sort of cached current value of that query path. So this value is finally, this is the thing that came back from the server. Oh my gosh, we finally did it. And we call the setter that was given to us by solid, solid JS. And then there we have it. <laughs> so we have the whole life cycle. Handle new values will be called for any outstanding subscriptions. If we're still, if we still care about them, we will grab them from the convex client's cache, and we will finally call the setter that was given to us by SolidJS. Create query is called by the application. It uses the context uh, to grab the client, basically. 
and then it um, calls add sub and then we'll call rm sub whenever solid js determines that it no longer needs to care about the query um, we're not going to do anything yet with create mutation we're just going to say um, nah let's let's come back and do that soon um, here i'll just do a like throw unimplemented there we go yay okay that still says one error what is it not like um it says expected comma hmm what did i do wrong here create context hmm. I'm not quite sure what's unhappy about here. Oh. Let's see. What did I miss? What did I miss that I got right the first time? And now I'm sitting here staring at. Oh. Oh, oh, oh. This from. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. There. Okay. That might work. Let's wire it up and see. All right. Okay. All right, first things first, I like to get basic. Is the app still working? Here it is running in the background. Localhost 3000. Okay, the app still works, it's good. We haven't broken it yet. All right, in the index.tsx, let's say, um, convex context dot provider value equals, I'm gonna say client, like this. I think I'm remembering the syntax off the top of my head. Yep, I think that's right. And then we need a const client equals solid, no, convex solid client. New, that import, yep, yep, okay. Good, so we should now have a client pulling our URL from the JSON. Um, and we are, actually, let me rename this to be a little better than that, convex. So I can't type here. There, okay. I think we're still good. It reloaded, still works. Good, no one's unhappy. Finally, const uh, convex count equals create query. Huh. And we called it get counter is the name of the function. And we are omitting passing any arguments, which will default to an empty list because get counter doesn't take any arguments. Okay, still happy? Yeah. The current value is count. The current global value is um, convex count. It's not happy. Why isn't it happy? Oh, I'm just gonna do number because we don't really have type inference on what this uh, we don't have any code gen like we do for React that says what this uh, what this query function actually returns. So you know, TypeScript has no idea. Um, boom! What do we think? Hooray! Twenty three. Look at that. Look at that. So let's let's check it. Let's check it. So if we go into convex demos and go back to here and run dev three thousand one. Over here, we've got our old school React one, 23. Look, 24, 25, 26. Solid is updating as well. Yay, we have subscriptions. It works. All right, it's a really small detail actually compared to the query side because there's no subscriptions involved in mutation. So the semantics are much simpler, but let's just do create mutation just to be complete because we want to be able to change things on the solid side as well. So that's gonna look pretty straightforward. We're probably gonna copy and paste this here, do it like that. We have our convex client. We'll do the same thing with the full args. 
here. And then we're just going to return a callable that is actually doing something really straightforward. It returns convex.mutate. Um, wait, oh, we didn't make a mutate yet. Um, well, we'll do that in a second. Um, UDF. Yeah, I don't want UDF. I want query path. UDF is kind of an internal term that we're trying to move away from and just call them query paths. But um, query path and then args, full args. It's mad because that function doesn't exist yet on our convex client. And we're just being kind of clean here. Um, and this is mostly just pass through because again, mutations aren't doing subscriptions or anything fancy, but we'll put it on there just to be clean. Okay. So no one can say I didn't. Um, args says any, and it's going to return a promise of any. Return this dot client dot mutate query path args. I think that's probably all we need. No one's yelling about any TypeScript errors. We grab the client. We, we default to no args if they omit the argument. And then we call the inner the inner clients mutate and it does the same thing. It's a lot of layers, but whatever. It's probably right. Okay, and it returns a callable that would just do this over and over again. So let's go back to our app. Increment it, not it, local it, local. Global it, um, const increment global count equals create mutation, and this doesn't return anything. Um, query path is increment counter, pretty sure is what we called it. And it takes one argument, which is the number one. We want to increment it by one. Let's increment it by two, just for fun. So instead of set count here, we're going to go increment global count. Just call that by itself. Increment global it. We're being a little too cute, huh? Let's call it count instead of it. Oh, will this work? Shall we see? Local. Local count, local count, local count, local count. Let's get these side by side so we can see the moment of truth. Yep, local counts are going up. Global count, going up by one. Global count, up by two, look. Our shared state, it's working from SolidJS. So, cool, I know that was a lot of code. Thanks for sticking with me. Um, I'm gonna up, upload this in, I'll put it in the notes, um, the, the repo where to find this so that you can take a closer look at this itty bitty um, client, solid convex client, convex solid client. So um, this, so if you wanna try to play around a little bit yourself with solid and convex together, this is a good starting point. Our team does not have an official solid client. I'm kind of just doing this for fun. Uh, but like at some point, it might be something we look more into as um, we're taking a look at frameworks like Svelte and Solid and other things to see how do we want to expand, you know, official support for um, more web frameworks because there's amazing ones that are coming out all the time. But in the meantime, um, what's cool is we can... Um, use this internal client if you want to do use solid or even use it your own framework or some other third party thing you're interested in. Um, as long as it's JavaScript TypeScript, you can grab onto that internal convex client and then build your own couplings of any other reactive thing to convex and play around with it. And if you do make sure you join our Slack, um, I'm going to put a, um, a little note in real quick on that. So, so that um, I'm being, being good here and making sure to get everybody into um, let's see overlays 
text. There we go. Um, cool. So this is the URL, convex.dev slack. And let's make it, uh, let's grab that and move it down there. I'm gonna move it on my shirt, so it's dark. Boom, convex.dev slash slack. Come join the community, uh, play around with convex on React, play around with convex on anything else, use the internal client. Let us know how it goes. We're eager to see Convex show up in lots of other places and see people building lots of cool things with it. Hopefully this was interesting for you all. Um, and that's it. I'm done for now.